This video is brought to you by Ravenscraft Realty of Northeast Missouri. Oh man, boys, we're spraying today. Now Grandpa's gonna go spray the March beans. Just kind of halfway full with the boom so we didn't have to drive on the highway. Sadly, it seems like the uh, very, very high humidity has kicked up a little rain shower here right by the house. It's pretty local because I can see the end of it right over there, kind of by woodland. And it didn't go very far this way either. But be as it may, uh, the ground was already kind of wet here locally anyways. Dad went and checked around in the bottom. He thought maybe we could potentially, possibly try and go plant something down there today. But if, if it keeps doing this, uh, we're not going to be planting anything. We're going to try and shove some beans in the ground today. Uh, Dad's going to take the planter and we're going to uh, do two or three places uh, by Palmyra. And I'm, I don't know if Grandpa's going to be able to spray today because of how humid it is. And uh, speaking of humidity, it is extremely, extremely humid. I can barely snap my fingers. Grandpa and I are going to get Dad's pickup and seed tender move to one of the places where we're going to end up at tonight. Oh my gosh, a first gen. Oh, I want one so badly. And we are off. I am going to take the 520 and the Salford here and go work the farm that dad's going to plant. He's got two places that don't lay very well to keep them occupied in the meantime. So that'll give me plenty of time to get it worked down and uh, Grandpa is also going to be on the same farm uh, with the tractor and the blade because there's a small ditch that's formed. Well, it's there every year because uh, terrace doesn't work quite right and uh, that's not that terrace in particular isn't super high on the list of priorities to fix, but it'll be all right. Grandpa sprayed my two fields here yesterday. The grasses are starting to die down, but the uh, winter annuals that were on this uh, March piece over here have really died down overnight. I'm extremely proud of my job shooting a row. I think we're probably going to have to plant around that spot right there. Yeah. I just got the uh, I need seed phone call from dad. So we're dropping what we're doing here for a little bit and we're going to take dad seed tender and seed and get them filled up. And sun's out and it is very humid and very sticky. Ugh. Uh, also, we're doing a little bit of uh, cheating the system here. We actually told the FSA office, which is right there. Yeah, we told them that this was a cover crop. Uh, that's just a little hack. They give you like uh, $69 an acre, uh, like a subsidy, if you have a cover crop on your land. And so there's like 100 and uh, maybe there's like 95 acres here. But uh, made a decent chunk of money off of that. Just don't tell them, okay? If you do that, I'm going to block you. Yeah, I just kind of parked the seed tender here in their parking lot. It's a Sunday. The government doesn't work on Sundays. We made it without incidents. Yeah, it was like two miles, but still, no problems. He should be good to go for a while anyways. I'm going to take this back to the uh, farm I was at and get back to work. The reason that we're tilling up this ground here, uh, we're just right on the west side of Palmyra. Uh, the type of soil that this is, is a clay pan. It's not super well drained. And uh, the way that this soil works, if you try to no-till it, it's gonna be wet no matter how hot it's been. But there's one redeeming factor here. If you can break it open with something, like a salford or a field cultivator, it will dry out in pretty short order and it'll be okay. I mean, we're talking just hours for it to dry out versus being a swamp and trying to farm that. You can even see the color difference in the soil right where I've been working and where it's been left to lay for a few hours and dry out in the sun. And this is like tabletop flat, so out in the middle, there are some places that are kinda wet, so Dad's probably gonna have to go around those or risk uh, putting a bunch of mud in the gauge wheels. I think we've never done that before. And this 9520RX is uh, turned up a little bit, about 620 horsepower. 
and uh, it likes to drink fuel. But man, it pulls the heck out of this Salford. I love this thing. I'll give it to the Canadians. They can sure make vertical tillage tools. Yeah, I was doing, I'm doing my endros now, and I saw something that caught my eye. So now, since I've been a planter man for most of the spring, I notice things like rocks, and now I understand why Dad, being the real planter man, wants us to uh, wants the tillage guys to pick up stuff like that because it's not very fun going over rocks with a planter. Uh, it is H O T hot. Oh, also, I'll show you the job that we're doing with the Salford here. So given that this is vertical tillage, so we're towing around this way, not this way, uh, we're chopping up weeds like this mare's tail, but we're not actually tearing the roots out. It does a great job on grasses and winter annuals, but uh, things like mare's tail that are rooted a little deeper or between the uh, actual blades, it does not take out. However, it chews it up. So the idea is that it'll die. And that is uh, vertical tillage for dummies. And with this past vendor is done, done with this farm. It's like a hundred and I, I want to say it's 115, but that just doesn't sound quite right. We're going to get folded up and get home because uh, Columbia is calling my name. I really have to uh, appreciate this nice cab tractor with air conditioning and a radio because what's waiting for me tomorrow at the university is a 4230, four post rops, and a six row planter, and 50 acres of corn to replant. Allegedly, I, I was told that I was going to do it, but you know, subject to change, it is what it is. Right over there between the uh, poles on the phone pole, or power line, there's a fox, or a coyote or something. Okay. That might be my last tractor action for the crop year, at least at home. In our old garden here, uh, Dad tilled up strips yesterday and then planted uh, su sweet corn and uh, sunflowers here for our livestock to munch on. The livestock being the uh, chickens here. Okay, goodbye for the next week and a half-ish. Yeah, the air conditioning is working uh, very, very hard to keep it cool. The change of plans. Uh, Switch the Case IH planter down here over to corn, and uh, my coworker is going to replant the majority of it. But uh, I'm also going to plant. There's all kinds of fun tillage going on today. Now we're just purging the uh, bean seed out of the planter for the corn unit so that we're not planting uh, beans in our corn. 4230's going. I got my map of all the special fields I'm going to do. I guess we'll get to it. The fuel gauge on this thing says it's three quarters of the way full, but uh, I don't trust that because I looked in the uh, tank and uh, there wasn't much in there. Hydraulics on the old girl like to leak off a little bit. Oh well. I'm gonna go in D1. Planting $7 replant corn in the middle of 
tune. It just is what it is. I mean, uh, we've had to do the same thing at home, so I know the pain, but a lot of people do. We planted all the corn, perfect time in May, and then uh, it rained like four inches the next week and just never got a chance to dry out. The corn does not like to have wet feet at all. To the annex we go. After each of these fields that I've been planting, I've been getting out to check my seed level. Notice that hoppers two and three use significantly more seed than the others. So I'm just gonna dump this uh, little mini bag in and uh, that'll probably finish me off. Yeah, through my experience here with this planter, which has fertilizer boxes, and my planter at home that has insecticide boxes, which this one does not, I found the only thing that they're really good for now is uh, keeping stuff in, like my spare seeds in there. And then I think there's some graphite in there as well, but uh, not many people use uh, the solid fertilizer or even uh, the granular insecticides anymore. Oh yeah, we're good on seed. Oh. As it turns out, it was the right call to switch the other planter over to corn, because if I had done this, I, uh, it would have taken me a very, very long time. 100.25 horsepower of naturally aspirated fury. No turbo here. this end row here we're gonna have to turn around a little bit different just because there's a giant hole right there and I won't be able to plant through it or at least I shouldn't plant through it. The rows look pretty good. It's a little windy. And thank goodness for a four post, four post canopy. I would be fried right now without it. So you come to about here. Make sure that your planter is kind of centered over the mark. This end. So I'll back up here real quick and get her a little bit nicer. That's better. Go back, I'm planting in C, uh, C2 for my straight rows. Set the planter down. Planter's on the number one hydraulic marker. I'm not gonna set it all the way down yet, but it's on number two. And then, Take back off. Blah 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 blah. The monitor, monitor goes off. You're good to go. Parker's down. Life's good. Well, this is a six-row planter, right? And the case size combine uh, Bradford leases runs eight-row head. So the math isn't quite there. So I just had to be extra, extra careful. Paying attention to my mark uh, until re very recently, I didn't have the earbuds in at all. Just paying attention to that, and I got the hang of it good enough. So hopefully, uh, don't have any major problems with my planting skills. I don't think you should, because I'm good at what I do, right? Oh, my coworker and I just got the case. I each planter switched back over to me, and so we can go over to the beef farm and plant uh, the three fields, 78 acres there. Uh, done with corn, hopefully for the year. Still some stuff we have to do research wise with that winter. Well, I have to load this planter with uh, bag soybeans. We only broke two of them, but uh, yeah, fun. Big time university farming in the creek bottoms here on uh, South Farm. What an eventful week. Getting closer to wrapping up at home, and then here, uh, we've still got some to do. Like uh, this year, our responsibilities here have changed, uh, but uh, we're getting it done. And I get to drive cool tractors like the 6200, 
4230, which is basically a super 4020 after my extensive five hours running it. But uh, I'm having lots of fun. And uh, if you ever have any doubts about working away from home for a summer, 100% do it. I don't regret it. Or not yet anyways. But uh, with that, thank you all for watching. And uh, if you like what you see, subscribe and uh, like the video as well. Helps promote it through uh, YouTube's unknown algorithm. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. You take care.